So, Patricia Ann Landon McGalley, Little Flower from Houston, Texas, coming at ya from the great state of Washington. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is October 15th, 2023. It's been, uh, I guess there was a solar eclipse yesterday. I have just been so wrapped up in all of my research, trying to bandwagon up uh, some self-research to equip myself with uh, some weaponry. Because if you think about it, your weaponry is your knowledge. Your weaponry is um, your armor to keep the bullies from muscling in on you, to keep the bullies from trying to um, obfuscate the playing field with nothing more than illusions. So if you can break through the illusions with fact, it takes away their ability to propagate false bravado where ethics should be. So I've been pretty busy at the library, but I will say this. I love the library. I love, uh, I like to research and, um, at heart, I am uh, an introvert with ginormous extrovert tendencies, you know? So uh, getting up in front of a crowd where most people might uh, kind of um, move the bowels involuntarily, <laughs> I, just, I gravitate towards it. But it was something I had to uh, build towards. It was something that I had to uh, make strides in overcoming because at heart, I was an introvert and a wallflower and a very shy child growing up. And uh, it was pretty rough and I didn't want to be like that anymore. So I broke out of that. Getting up in front of a crowd is nothing to me anymore. And uh, as a heavily targeted individual, ironically, <laughs> I'm always in front of a fucking crowd. <laughs> and then uh, so growing up I had wonderful parents that you know that uh, my dad wasn't perfect but you know he was a stand up man you know even though he was a uh, raging alcoholic sure highly functioning um, the man was a steadfast provider dude he cared for his family at home. We never went without. You know, uh, they burdened the uh, financial uh, burdens to themselves. Didn't really talk about it amongst the kids. But at the end of the day, nothing was ever missed. And whenever I graduated high school, he made sure that him and my mom put me through nursing school, you know? And, uh, and he was so good at providing my uh, mother's um, mother, my Lula, my Philippine grandmother, my father used to send uh, funds on the regular to the family back in the Philippines, to his wife's mother. That was the kind of man my father is. <laughs> so when I say he was a good provider, this man was a good provider. I mean, he was so good. One of his mistresses, he sent uh, the child to um, school. I, I don't know how much a month he sent her. I think like 300 or something back in the 80s. Back in the 80s, you know? So uh, that's how good he was a provider. <laughs> and the only, uh, the only issue I had with it after, you know, I don't know if I knew at the time, but uh, as I grew older, I really wanted to do um, percussion in a uh, percussion period, you know, in band. And um, I really wanted to do the drums. I've always loved the drums, you know? And then so, but uh, my parents couldn't afford <laughs> to send me to the percussion, you know, to do the band and, uh, you know, in school. 
And I, you know, I was really, I was, uh, I can't say I was disappointed, but I was really put out because damn it, I wanted to do the drums and I was looking forward to that. But um, the funds were inadvertently on the down low used to send this woman's kid to school. Oh yeah, I remember now. I didn't know at the time. I learned about it whenever um, the closet was open and exposed my dad's skeletons and everything came out in one fell swoop because uh, he uh, had multiple uh, lives on the down low and uh, his second and third lives <laughs> were so good, <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> So when I found out that my dad, uh, that's why my parents couldn't afford it, I was like, oh. <laughs> so do I feel robbed? No, I did at the time. Because, uh, you know, I really wanted to do the drumming. But, you know, one of my friends had said that I voiced it to, and this was so beautiful of them. It was very, it was a, a very higher, sense of emotional psychological well-being that i couldn't see at the time you know because uh whenever i was telling this to her she goes well wasn't it a good thing that a girl got to go to school and i was like oh i never thought about it that way <laughs> and then you know i kind of feel like felt like a heel oh, sure but uh you know now that i know everything i know I love watching the different uh, tarot card readers, the mystics, because you don't just get a tarot reading. You get a playing field, you know? And it's not very often people have conversations with each other about moral aptitude, ethical aptitude, because we're a fluid society that's always on the hurry, always on the rush. So, unless you are gathering for a particular reason, a lot of times you don't tend to stray outside the common denominator, you know? But the thing about tarot card readers, mystics, is that they tap into the ethers. I didn't think that was a real thing, but it turns out to be a real motherfucking thing. <laughs> I have my experiences, I'll share another time. But uh, I'll tell you what, when it comes to the Tarot readers, I've always grown up a Catholic in the Catholic Church. I was baptized, I had my first communion, went to church every Sunday, um, had my catechism and uh, catechism classes, and even had my confirmation in high school. I went, I was in the catechism, you know, since I was in pre-K, I mean pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, whatever, all the way through my junior year, high school. I even sang in the church choir on the regular. <laughs> Bitch, I wasn't really good at it, but fuck, I loved choir. <laughs> I was in the Woodlands Youth Chorale as a kid. It was a wonderful performing um, 